In this video, I will try to go a bit more in detail about how I have created my NS Panel Pro dashboard. Just to be clear from the start, I won't go through every line of code in this video. That would take hours. But I will try my best to explain how I've created my layouts and some of the things I've done to make the dashboard functional and adaptable. You could grab the code from the Gumroad link in the description, but you will still have to do a lot of work to adapt it to your needs. First of all, I have created a new user account and a new dashboard for the NS panel. You can create a new dashboard by going to Settings, Dashboards, and Add New Dashboard. My NS panel dashboard is split into four pages. This is the first page with a clock, weather, and two buttons. To make sure I can control the layout exactly as I want, I use Layout Card in Grid Mode. This is a custom integration from Hacks. For this first page, I have two columns and two rows, left and right, and footer at the bottom. If I go into the first card, the clock card, you can see that it's just a grid with one column, then I have a gap card to move everything down, and my go to card, which is button card. The important thing here is to specify what grid cell this belongs to using the view layout code. The clock card itself is pretty simple. In a previous video, I have showed how to create the template sensor. The tap action here is actually unnecessary. It opens the sidebar. But I had problems with kiosk mode, so I'm not hiding the top menu anymore. The buttons at the bottom is also button card. These are also using a design I've showed in a previous video. The functionality is simple. The first button opens and closes the front door. You can also quickly see if the door is unlocked because it turns red if it is. The second button just shows our Wi-Fi password if you click it. After using this panel for a short while, I've realized that it would be handy to have some more buttons in this area, like some buttons to activate different scenes for example. The weather card is probably the most advanced on this page. First, I've created an input number helper. I then use this together with three conditional cards. Then in the cards, I use tap action to go to the next number, effectively toggling between the different cards. I have showed how to create these animated weather icons in a previous video. For this card, I've just scaled it bigger and positioned it using CSS. You may have noticed that I have three conditional cards, but I'm currently using just two of them. I'm still working on the third one, which will be a forecast of the next few days. And that's it really for the first page. The second screen is where I can control lights and devices in various rooms. At the top, I can select or flick through the rooms. Again, by using conditional cards, I can display the controls related to the selected room. I can also toggle a button to go between light sliders and scene buttons. This, again, is another conditional card. To set this up, I first create a drop-down helper with the rooms that I want. Then, in the dashboard, I have a conditional card for each room. The first room, the living room, has a few more OR conditions, just so it defaults to this room if something were to happen to the drop-down helper. Then, each of the other conditional cards just looks at the state of the drop-down helper. Inside each conditional card, I first use a layout card in grid mode. This lets me create two columns with different sizes. First column is one third of the width, and the second is two thirds. You can see that I specify the grid cell names to be one and two. The idea is that the first column contains two cards that is always available. One to display the temperature, and one button to toggle between light sliders and scene buttons. To create the first column, I first set up a grid card with one column. It is then important to specify what grid column this one column grid belongs to. Inside I have two button cards. Again, this first one is based on my sensor cards from the sensor cards video. The second button is just an icon, but it toggles a boolean helper that is specific to this room. When the boolean is on, scene buttons are displayed. When it's off, light sliders are being displayed. As you can see, I have one of these input boolean helpers for each room. Then for the second column of this layout, the one that is two-thirds of the width, I use conditional cards to either show the scene buttons or the light sliders. When the button is on, I just have a two-column grid with some buttons. These buttons are again based on my sensor cards. At the moment, there is room for four buttons. Since they are all perfectly square, it all aligns up. But if I were to add more buttons, I would need to adjust the aspect ratio of the buttons to fit. When designing for this screen, it is also important to keep in mind the height of the layout. I really don't want to have any scrolling, so less is absolutely more in this case. The third tab is the same as the previous one, only this is showed when the toggle button is off. Here I just have a one column grid with light sliders inside. I haven't showed these light sliders on the channel yet, so I will make a video about them soon. 
Then it's just a matter of duplicating this whole card and changing the conditions and the helpers. This can be a very time consuming task, but I think I have found a relatively easy way to add, remove, or edit rooms. The way I do it is by opening the code editor at the top level, then I copy the whole code. Then I add a new card, for example the alarm, then I paste the code into it to replace it. Then I just need to edit the conditions and helpers to make it work. I know this card editor can look a bit crazy with all the conditional and grid cards, but I think once you've done one, you get the hang of it and can create more quite easily. The last thing I haven't explained about this page is the top navigation bar. It is basically just two buttons either side and an input select entity in the middle. You could get the same result in many different ways. I've again used a layout card in grid mode to create the layout. It just lets me control the size of the cards a bit easier than a grid card or horizontal stack. To make the buttons work, I just have a tap action that calls the input select previous and next service. For the middle drop down menu, I just use the built in entities card. But I have some card mod CSS that removes the background and icon. The last page is the vacuum page. I won't go into full details here because my next video is going to be about how I have created this system for my main mobile dashboard. The idea is that I have a button for each room. The buttons are actually just toggling input boolean helpers when clicking on them. Then I have one big button that starts the vacuuming. This button starts a script that runs through the selection and tells the robot what rooms to vacuum. If no rooms are selected, it vacuums the whole floor. Again, I will show this whole system in detail in an upcoming video. In terms of the layout, I start with a one-column grid. Then the first card is a layout card. This header has a status card that just display the battery and what the vacuum is doing. This card uses two custom fields, one to display a battery icon, this changes depending on the state of the vacuum, and another one that just displays the battery percentage. I use the label to display the state of the vacuum. Then there's a bunch of CSS to position these elements. The second card is a button that toggles between two conditional cards, similar to the one I had for each room. Then the main part of this page is the two conditional cards. These look at the state of the toggle button above. Inside I use a layout card. This lets me have four square buttons and one big button on the side. If you have more rooms, you will need to figure out a different layout. The buttons inside is exactly the same as everywhere else in this dashboard. They just turn yellow when selected. The big green button is based on the same template as the other ones. This starts the script that starts the vacuuming. I've also made the text change a bit depending on if there are rooms selected or not. Like I said earlier, I will do a more detailed video about how I've created this system for my mobile dashboard. It's definitely nice to be able to select one or more rooms and have the vacuum clean them automatically. Earlier, if I wanted to clean two rooms, I had to click one button, wait for it to finish, then click the next button. And that concludes this video. I hope it answered some of your questions, and maybe it even gave you a few ideas. I've cleaned up the code and made it available on my Gumroad, so check that out if you're interested. Next video will be about vacuuming. So until then, have a good one.